As promised, we're going to show you how to wire up these Cobb LED strips. It comes in a big strip like this. We'll have the links below of exactly what spec. Don't buy the wrong ones, guys. You want the 12 amp for up to 5S, possibly even 6S. If you get the 24 volt version, it's not going to be as bright. You want these to be blindingly bright from the sky so that you can see them very far away. You also want to make sure and get the 5 millimeter ones so that they actually fit on an arm. And we're going to install a set just like this. This is actually two pieces. You, we're going to show you how to connect them together. We're going to install it on this section here and then wire it up to the EAC. Do you ever keep those little bits of wire after you've installed a new set of motor like I do? Well, we're going to use those today to wire some of these up. And we're going to take a little length of strip. And if you can see right here, there is a little tiny line going across there. We're going to cut on that line. Now I've measured it out. I know that this is actually two of those lines long. So I'm going to cut here and I'm going to do one more and I'm going to cut here. Now the First thing that I'm going to do is wire these up together. You're also going to want to have some electrical tape. I like to use the 3M Super 33. It's very tough and it doesn't have as much gooey residue as some of that cheaper stuff. So when you're ready to start, you should have four little wires. If you're going to do a uh, spec seven, like I'm doing a tiny one, a slightly larger one. Those are going to be to connect these two like this. Now, if you're doing a regular five inch frame or freestyle frame or a racing frame on the open racer, I can only fit one of these two inch links like this. So you would just do that and go straight to the two long wires to go to your ESCs. If you're doing a freestyle frame with longer arms, you could probably fit a two light section like this. You would go wire these up and go straight to the frame, but we're going to show you how to do the long way to do a V shaped LED like this. It's the same exact steps, just a few less steps. If you're doing a shorter one, go ahead and get our soldering iron nice and hot. Now, first, what you're going to want to do is expose the pads on both ends of these. So we're going to peel back not the entire thing but just a little bit of this adhesive so there's adhesive right here then that's what's going to help it stick to the arm but we need to take the adhesive part out of the section that we're going to solder to so just kind of gently go like that it's clear so you can't really see it that well you should have a nice smooth surface and if it doesn't solder right then you didn't clean it up right so just do it again i like to use kester's 6337 kester's is the besters we'll have links for that good solder right there so you're going to tin these little pads up, then you're going to tin your wires up and just solder the two wires to the pads. They're not addressable LEDs, which means you can't change the color. So you buy a roll of whichever color you would like. These are blue because that's kind of my signature color. Now, if you had a freestyle frame, you're ready to go. You stick that to the arm of your freestyle frame. You cover up the end that has any pads. This has adhesive. So you just kind of stick it on there, hold it with some zip ties, and you run this two wires to any two motor pads we're going to do the long way though because we're going to give you the v-shape but if you're doing freestyle frame you're done now now to connect your wires you're going to want a short piece like this now for these short pieces you're actually going to want to have one slightly longer than the other just like these two little pieces so we're going to grab the first one and do the short one right here then take the longer one put it on the next one till it dries now you're going to take your second piece but we're going to wire two sections of these together so that we can make this triangular V shape. So next thing we're gonna do is the same thing like we did before, peel a little bit back, make sure to peel that adhesive back as well. Then we're going to tin this section. And this section. Now do you see what we're gonna do? We're gonna connect them like this to make that V. So just to make it a little bit easier, I'm gonna do this in a straight line. This is the Omnifixo thing that you might have seen on Barbell. I do have a review of this and other helping hands. I don't use these a ton, but for little projects like this where you need two weird things to hold still, it actually works pretty well. So we're gonna do this one right here. And then the other side. So now we'll be able to do something kind of like this. Now, before we go any further, we're going to go ahead and start applying some electrical tape because you're going to want to cover all of these tiny little connections with electrical tape because I know what's going to happen. You're going to wire this up. You're going to get really excited. You're going to want to go plug it in. And guess what? These little metal connections are going to be facing your carbon, which is conductive, and everything's going to explode and singe your eyebrows off right as soon as you do it. So I don't want your wife or your mother or your brother or whoever coming complaining to me that I taught them this tutorial on how to burn your eyebrows off. So don't burn your eyebrows off guys, do this. So we're gonna cut some little strips of this stuff. 
Uh, you could technically do this at the end, but we're gonna do it now, right? Never wait till tomorrow what you could do today because tomorrow you're gonna forget. And that's when the eyebrows are gone. Now we're gonna pick which one is gonna be the end, or you're gonna wanna cover the end, and then the other one we're gonna put the wires to. So now it should look kind of like this. We have both of these covered. We have this covered with heat shrink. Now we're actually gonna take our long wires and you're gonna to wanna to measure from where you place this to your motor pad, make sure it's enough length. So if I had this here and I was gonna go up to a motor pad here, is this long enough? Yeah, it is. In fact, it's just a little bit too long. These are gonna work perfect, these little strips that I picked out. So all you gotta do is the same thing again. Peel back the outer layer and the adhesive. And that's what those little line markers are. Those little line markers are to mark where your pads are gonna be. You can see I cut this one a little bit close, but it should still be fine. I'll just solder the long pieces on. Now you should have something that looks pretty much like this. So we're gonna get our craft, figure out how we wanna mount this on. Probably something like this. I do have a couple of zip ties here, so I'm just gonna take this one off. Now we can go ahead and peel back our backing. Now when you peel that off, you wanna make sure that adhesive stays to this side and not this side. So make sure and feel it that it's sticky because that's what's gonna keep these pads from impacting your carbon. But just to be on the safe side, we're gonna go ahead, put a little electrical tape right where that would go, just to give us a little bit of extra protection, just for that extra piece of mind. So now we can actually stick this on. And in this case, I have this ghost antenna mounted already, but I'm gonna go ahead and redo these zip ties, just so I can mount this LED a little more flush. Then we're gonna bend this side over this way. And before we stick the last piece, don't forget we need to put a little bit of electrical tape here. So now we got that pretty much installed. Next thing we're gonna do is take a little bit more electrical tape and we're just gonna wrap this whole end, securing it to the arm here at the end. The other pieces we're gonna use zip ties right here, just like that. Now we can route these wires upward. Now we've tinned the two wires up here and we're gonna solder them to our motor pads. Now, since we already have motor wires soldered up there, we're gonna add a little bit of flux pin just to help everything flow nice and easy. And we're gonna double check all these connections just to make sure none of them are loose since this is sort of a double joint now. Cause this, these joints are powering this one and this one. So for this top side, I have it going to the middle and the front. For the bottom side, I'm gonna do the front and the back just so that we have a little bit of extra spacing and they're not all going to the same spot. This one I got the most room, so I'm gonna take that one up to the front. I don't know if you could see in there, I'm just gonna solder it like that. So just get our soldering iron in there. Once you got everything soldered up, what you wanna do is just give a little tug with some tweezers to each wire because we have this back one is a motor wire and then this is an LED. And we wanna just make sure that as we were soldering on the LEDs, we didn't loosen any of those motor connections. Everything looks good. So now we can do a test. I'm gonna turn down the lights a little bit. And here's the one that we just installed. And there you have it guys. I'll do the last one off camera. And here's what it looks like after all four are wired up for you. And these are gonna be extremely bright as you fly along the track. If you check out Yvonne's latest video, you can actually see some of these flying during the daytime and they're still bright. So very, very cool project. Links for this exact setup below, there's multiple colors that you can get uh, from Amazon. So if you do happen to click on that link, it will help the channel. And if you appreciate this video, I would appreciate if you would do that. Then to help the channel even further, as soon as you click it, go buy some of these LED strips and then go ahead and buy, you know, like 17 refrigerators, you know, um, that would help even more. And you know, it's, it's always very handy to have a beer fridge and having 16 beer fridges means you won't ever run out. Thanks guys.
Okay, here's the walk of shame with the big quad. It wouldn't take off, so I'm hoping that I didn't kill a motor, but it's very possible that I did. Oh, it looks like the battery is loose. So that's a good sign. Because if it's just the battery loose, then that could be why it didn't take off. Let's go check it out. It's beeping at me. You're beeping. Let's see what happens if I try to arm it. 